Hey guys, welcome to Appalachia's Homestead. Pater with you. Tonight, as promised, I'm going to show you how I make my very simple pizza dough. This is something I've kind of thrown together uh, with modifications from other recipes over the years that I've been using or seeing and working with, and that's homemade versus not homemade and whatever. And this is what I have found works best for our family and is delicious, okay? So I'm gonna make this a fast video. It's gonna be like boom, 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 because you wanna get right to the recipe. First thing you're gonna want is a mixing bowl. Now I'm gonna use my uh, KitchenAid, Miss Louise. That's what I've named her. We're gonna be using her tonight. Now in the food storage challenge, I did this all by hand, okay? And it shows you why some of these items are gonna be really killer to have on hand, okay? First things first, I make it really simple, stupid, guys, so I can remember stuff. You're going to need one tablespoon of olive oil. Not very difficult. You're going to put it in your mixing bowl, whether it's electric or you're doing it or not, okay? So, how easy can we get? Now, I pre-measured this for you so I can keep things a little bit easy and flowing and going for time. Boom, done. The next thing you're going to add in there is your yeast. Now, technically, you're using a packet. Some folks would say a teaspoon, two teaspoons, whatever. I just do less than a tablespoon. I, I keep the whole tablespoon thing in mind so that I'm like tablespoon, tablespoon, tablespoon. So I can just keep it real crazy, simple, stupid. That's the goal. If you're off a little bit, don't sweat the small stuff, people. It's going to be really good pizza. I promise. So that's a little bit less than a tablespoon of uh, yeast. Now, I use the SAF or the SAF yeast. Um, I love that stuff. So I'm going to plop it in there. Okay, secrets up. Have you ever eaten Stefano's pizza? If you're from Knoxville, Tennessee, one of the best places you probably ever ate pizza in your whole life growing up like I did was Stefano's pizza. Why was their pizza so good? The crust. I'm, I'm a sucker for the crust, okay? And I'm going to tell you right now, if you've ever had their crust, you're going to know right now that when you eat this, you're going to go, am I at Stefano's pizza? Why? Brown sugar, baby. You're going to put a tablespoon, yes, I'm telling you, Put a tablespoon of the brown sugar in there, right here. These are your basic ingredients. All right, and then you're gonna do, I've already measured it out, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a cup of warm water. Not too hot, you don't wanna get, you don't wanna scald anything, you don't wanna ruin your yeast or anything. But you know, just lukewarm to warm water. You're gonna pour it in your bowl. Four main items, four main ingredients to start with right here. This is what you do. Now, if you want to add herbs and do other things and get crazy as you start with this basic, or if you want to pull out the brown sugar, y'all do whatever you need to do. This is what we do. I'm simply going to mix this up, let it dissolve. I know it's not, I don't have my light on, but so when I come back, I'll turn the light on so you can see it. Just going to mix it up, okay? So let's go to that next shot. All right, so you can see right there, uh, just let it dissolve and worked it, and now I'm going to add the flour. I use white flour. Some folks like to split it and cut it and use half white flour with wheat flour and add a little wheat gluten. You know, whatever works for you folks. I use two cups of plain white flour. Boom, I put it in there, okay? I'm probably going to flip this all over the countertop in the process, but hey, we're doing the real deal here. So I'm just going to put it in there, okay? Okay? Then I'm going to add um, one teaspoon, this is all else you're going to add people, one teaspoon of baking powder, not baking soda, okay? Powder, powder, powder. Put it in there, put it in there. Now technically probably what I should have done is mix this in with the flour, yada, yada, yada. I know it, but you know what guys? We've been, I've been working all afternoon and it's 9.06 and it's pitch black dark and I need a shower and my kids are starved. <laughs> so. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's going to work out just fine. Put it in there. Lock it. Drop it. Start getting it to blend. And we're pressing forward. The main thing here is I'm giving you the ingredients. So you can tweak things a little bit on the timing or the mixing or the uh, whatever you do. You just, Probably many of you out there are much better pizza makers than I am. But this works. Let's move. All right, guys, so I've mixed it, kind of a pre-mix. It's still a little rough. I'm going to then cover it and let it sit for about 10, 15, 20 minutes, okay, and let it kind of start to rise up and settle and whatnot. That's kind of pre-prep, if you will, for my need. Sometimes you can punch them down. We'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, nonetheless, that's what I'm about to do. In the meantime, I've preheated my oven. I like to use Lodge cast iron for my pizzas. I think it has 
awesome results. So this is one of their flat griddles. I always call it my pancake griddle. You can use it for anything. This is my favorite pan for that, okay? Um, you can't use it really hardcore outside on the cowboy grill as easily as you can a Dutch oven because you have to cover the top. And since it's so flat, that kind of keeps that from happening. And plus you have to flip a nay nay and all that stuff. If you watch the food storage challenge, you'll see my pizza making there. You'll understand what I'm saying right now. So oven is preheated at 425. I'm going to let this sit for a few minutes. You can go on and start making more pizzas if you want to. Start pre-prep. I'm only making one right now. I really recommend you make a double or triple batch because you're going to be like, uh, can we have another pizza, please? And then you're going to have to go through the process again. For the sake of the video, I'm making one. Let's, uh, uh, we're making pizza out of nothing at all, right? So we're going to cover it, let it sit, and we'll be right back. All right, guys, just a one-hand little deal here. I've taken it out. I put it on my countertop. Actually, what I did is I punched it down, okay? And, you know, if you want to do a second rising with it, you know, I've, we don't do that. I don't, you know, don't worry about that. Punched it down, put a little flour down, and I'm just going to knead it a little bit more, mix it a little bit more. I'm filming with my left hand, working the dough. So I'm going to work this, and you just work it to how you feel. I, I don't have a time limit on this. I'm going to work it. I'm going to make it, you know, really nice and elastic. And like, I've got a cat that just fell off of a box over here. Poor old thing. And then I'm just going to transfer it over to my wonderful griddle. The pancake griddle. I love this thing. I'm telling you, I use it for my biscuits. You've seen my biscuit video. This is what I, when I make my biscuits and I roll them out and then I just cut them or, uh, yeah, just kind of slightly cut them and I transfer them over. This is what I cook them in. You really need one of these in your life. It will make it really, really, make you really happy. So I'm just going to work this, put it here, and we'll move to the next phase. Let's keep it rolling. All right, guys, you can see, let me move it over here. I've got it worked out, okay? Just worked it just for a minute. Don't want to, you know, don't don't overthink it. And then just kind of uh, start flattening it out, pressing it out, working with the elasticity. I put it right here on my cast iron skillet by Lodge. It's uh, actually the griddle, the pancake griddle, 10 inch. And then you're going to take a fork. And you're going to poke your holes. You know, make a design, make a smiley face, Mickey Mouse, whatever you want to do. I'm going to place this in the oven for four minutes. Four minutes. I'm going to let it pre-bake. I don't care if you use Jiffy. I don't care if you use your mama's recipe. I'm telling you, every time I've ever made any type of recipe of pizza dough and made pizza dough, you want to pre-cook it. Three or four minutes because that's what helps it starts to pre-bake. And then when you make your pizza, it's not still kind of goopy and doughy on the inside. It helps to take the edge off that without burning the rest of the goods. Four minutes, 425, let it cook. We'll take it out. Then we start adding the toppings, and it's getting really good now. All right, guys, exactly four minutes at 425. I'll let you see the whole deal here. You can see it's puffed up beautifully, just starting to brown just a hair, okay? So this is in your conventional oven. If you were outside in your Dutch oven um, and you did the coals correctly, it would do the same thing. If you're using a, a, a skillet, and you are putting your own lid on, you will have to flip it. That's out in the food storage challenge. We talk about all that. All I'm going to do tonight, just for this example, and because my kids have begged me, is I'm making a basic pepperoni pizza. You can make any pizza you like. You can add herbs. You can dab a little oil. You can add butter. Whatever you all want to do. You can make an apple pizza. I'm telling you right now, if you put some apple on this with some crumble and some butter, made an apple pizza. Oh, God. Okay, or cinnamon with butter. All those fancy pizzas that you see at all those places that you love, you can recreate this right now with this dough. I'm telling you right now, but we're going crazy, simple, stupid. All right, you can use your marinara's. Um, I like white pizzas. My favorite pizza of all time is a margarita pizza, and I'm going to make a mess here, people, so just expect it because I'm trying to film. Um, I like margarita pizzas, uh, you know, just a white pizza with the um, cheese, basil sweet basil any kind of like any type of basil guys it don't matter to me I'm, I'm a basil freak and then tomatoes and you add a couple spices um you know on top of that if you want to salt pepper whatever whatever that's my favorite but we're gonna go basic uh with pepperoni okay so pepperoni coming up we've got the marinara or the pizza sauce whatever you like it's all about what you like what, what you want to do okay this is just an example so you're going to do your cheese, blah, 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 blah. It gets a little messy, but we love it. 
right here. All right, and then I've got pizza topper. Boy, I'm gonna have to go shopping. Girlfriend's out of her pizza topper. This is a, a wonderful blend of spices and seasonings that I get up at the Country Cupboard in Crossville, Tennessee. Um, great for pizzas and different things like that. I put it on my goulash and everything. Okay, just do that. You can do cheese. You can add your fresh vegetables. I'm telling you, when you're making pizza like this and you go out to your garden and you're picking your own homegrown tomatoes and peppers and things like that, bell peppers, uh, banana peppers, and you're doing this crust with that, mm, mm -mm, talk about it. Okay, done. Boom. Made a quick pizza. I'm going to throw this in the oven. I'm going to tell you, bake at 425, same degrees, for about 8 to 10 minutes. You need to eyeball that. My elevation is different than yours. So when it looks like it's ready, the cheese is melted, it's starting to brown really good, pull it out, okay? You're on cast iron, so it's going to be hot. So we're going to bake it, and we're going to enjoy. Let's go to the next phase. All right, guys, right at eight minutes, okay? So eight to ten, but you really want to watch it around the eight-minute mark, okay? Just letting you know right there, okay? So just have, I would go ahead and just set the oven at eight and just know you might have to leave it a little bit longer. But this is what it's looking like. Very hot. Going to let it sit for about five minutes or so. Just kind of let it cool and settle down. And we'll slice it. We'll show you what it looks like. And <laughs> if it doesn't get consumed fast enough, because I've got three boys standing behind me going, when's it going to be ready? All right. So again, adapt it and make it how you want to. Okay. Once you get to the ingredients part, do whatever you want. I'm just giving you a basic rundown of how I make my homemade pizza, how we enjoy it, um, and the ingredients we use for a delicious, unforgettable crust. Folks are going to eat this and they're going to say, what did you put in that? It's going to be like the biggest mystery ever. It's delicious. So going to let this cool. We appreciate you coming along with us on the journey. As always, we love you guys. We just love you. So like and subscribe. Check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Pinterest. We'll talk to you soon. And uh, I think it's about time to eat, don't you think? We'll talk to you soon.